Well, originally I was a student here from 1963 to 1966. I, I went for three years, and um, the war in Vietnam was just getting going, so I joined um, the Marine Corps, um, went to Vietnam as a second lieutenant, and um, stayed on active duty till 1970, uh, May 15th. I got out. Um, meanwhile, um, my brother, my younger brother, David, was, um, had joined the National Guard right, a, right around the time I joined the Marine Corps, maybe just a few months earlier, and um, to avoid going to Vietnam, obviously. And um, when the shootings occurred, he was on campus and I was um, stationed in Quantico, Virginia. And I got out two weeks later with the intentions of coming back to Kent and finishing my undergraduate work, which I did. My brother and I lived together with two other guardsmen, and so um, I was going to classes as a student and living with guardsmen, and so there was a lot of, oh boy, uh, confusion in my mind. Um, and I, and I also believed in the Vietnam War um, all those years, so my memory of the event is that I was criticized um, for being a Vietnam veteran, and, um, and I shut down, um, and for the next 40 years stayed that way. The process of hanging around students and living with guardsmen who were, for the most part, adamantly against the war and were being threatened by the government that if they didn't fess up and, and tell who they saw shooting and, and exactly what happened, they were going to be sent to Vietnam themselves. And so there was a, a lot of pressure placed on them to do that, and, and which const resulted in, in a, a lot of anger um, among the, the two or three guys that I lived with. And then, of course, some of the things that, that I participated in um, as a platoon commander in Vietnam, all that stuff started making sense that it was wrong. Um, it was wrong to kill other human beings. And what the Marine Corps had trained me um, to do was, was wrong. For in that case, you know, that's not to say that our country shouldn't defend itself, um, but in the case of Vietnam. And so in a very short period of time, um, I too um, came to be a, a very much against the war. Um, everything, everything that, that I believed up until the time I got out of the Marine Corps was gone. And, and I, I shut down. I had no idea um, how, to, um, how to deal with that. I smoked a lot of pot. Um, my reasoning for that was uh, the nightmares. I had a lot of nightmares. Um, I just apologized to my daughters not too long ago for waking them up as often as I did in the middle of the night with my screams. Um, I, I'm sure it, it bothered my wife a lot because she knew that the result of those screaming nightmares was going to be a two or three day depression. I tell people that I was born in St. Thomas Hospital in 1945 and in 2006 I was reborn when um, my wife and daughters um, had me put into the psych ward at St. Thomas and I was finally able to quit. Um, there was an answer uh, to, um, to all the problems that, that, I, that, were so, that went unresolved in my head all those years. I've been able to get in touch with my own pain pretty much um, and use that, those experiences to help other people deal with trauma today. Um, knowing full well that the kids who went through what they did back in 1970, the kids who were students on campus, they also have their own post-traumatic stress, just like the guardsmen do. And um, I think what we've discovered today, um, anyone who 
goes through uh, unresolved traumas, a trauma, and then doesn't resolve it, um, that person's going to have issues today. How can they not?